What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. We are, ladies and gentlemen, Butter Side! Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Fellas, I appreciate you joining. Uh, if you could do me a quick favor, properly introduce yourself, let us know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment, plug and promote anything and everything. I'm Sam. Hi, I'm Sam. Patrick. What are the balloons? We're in Los Angeles, California. Did I just see balloons? I don't know what that was. What was that? That was crazy. I don't know. Yes. It's a new magic thing. What a... <laughs> yeah, yesterday he did a thumbs up, did a... and and a like thumbs up thing came yeah. flying up. We got we got we got animation, There's whether we like it or not. Yeah. That is yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, Patrick and Sam from Butterside. We're in Los Angeles, California. Anything in particular you? you wanna? I, I'm in uh, Victorville, so two hours away, it's Southern California. All right, we are neighbors. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot. Going on. We just we just dropped a new single, uh, "Good for Nothing." The video came out. It's uh, very violent and exciting. And uh, we've got a tour coming up with Sixty Nine Eyes. We'll be all over the East Coast and down to uh, all the way down to Nashville and back um, coming up in March. Yeah, yeah. That, that is amazing. And I want to start there. I'm glad you guys brought that up because the video for "Good for Nothing" is crazy. Like, I mean, one of the best videos I've seen in quite a long time. And I do this show every, like every, almost every single day. A, who shot the video? How did this whole process go about? And it looks like it was expensive. You don't have to tell us dollar amounts or anything like that, but let's talk about the- It was. I, it looked like it. Who, it who shot that? Who shot that video? Go ahead, say. Oh, me. Yeah. Um, so I sp we, yeah. we did a little interview yesterday and I did all the talking. So. I'm putting him on the hot seat. Oh, God. So, yeah, uh, we worked with Vicente, uh, Vicente Cordero. He's the director that we've been working with for a long time. We've done, what, 10 videos with him 10 at or least 12, now? something like that, yeah. And uh, Patrick had this idea to do this whole crazy Mad Max type of thing. And it was all green screen and took quite a long time to complete. Uh, but the shooting days itself, it was only a day shooting a, right? a 17 and a half hour day to be yeah to but be, yeah everybody was crying. Day, everybody but. was crying at the end and i'm funny i get on the set of our videos you know because it's all it all comes out of my head so it's really it's a, it's it's like doing it's just a major dopamine rush for me so it's like i'm it's basically like i'm on crack or something i get so excited that like by the time the whole thing winds down even after a 17 and a half hour day i still want to go you know there's certain things that i'm like oh if we do this if we do that like my brain's just still firing and everybody else is ready to go home our what? uh our roadie fits who i have to give the most credit to for this project uh i mean he was taking apart the van putting it back together like bringing each vehicle in like the, yeah, the bring amount it of in, bring it the, out. like yeah the amount of work that poor guy did that day was just above and beyond and he, and he was stuck in a chicken suit and he was in a chicken suit yes. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. He, he was ready to go by the end of the 17 hours for sure um, he was yeah. ready to go by the dude end of it, it it came out so awesome and i and i kind of i checked out the video for power hour before this and but but the the difference in like when you said it took a long time till it was finally done and ready i i'm guessing we're talking like three or four months I mean, <laughs> not, what, yeah right uh the the That's um funny. It's, it was a crazy, like, it's a really long yeah. story with that video. We shot that before we shot The Truth. We shot it before we shot The Joker or Power Hour um, because all of the, uh, so we, we initially hired a guy uh, that got on the phone with me and told me that he had worked on Batman and Spider-Man. And, like, I was totally freaked out. I went back and saw the Batman for a second time and, like, looked at all the pieces that he told me he did. And so, that guy didn't work out. Yeah, let's see. That. <laughs> that guy. So he, he wasn't, he, he we was got we got catfished. Yeah, we so yeah. Damn. So I, we had to let him go. We had to let him go after kind of allowing him to direct the whole thing. Luckily, Vicente was there, and of course, I had really been very thorough with the storyboard, so I knew exactly what the shots were before we shot it. You know, I knew everything we needed to get. So luckily, between the two of us, we managed to salvage enough that when we did hand it over to the guy that we finally found months later to take over the project, whose name is uh, Brennan Keenan, and he's uh, fan I mean, obviously fantastic. The whole, 
the entire video is thanks to this guy, to be honest. Like the way it looks, everything, like you wouldn't believe we're actually moving. Everything was green screen, sitting still, just like- And shot really... by shot too. It's not like we did a whole take of, you know, usually do, do a whole take of playing through the whole song, this and that. Yeah. It was literally just individual shots. Yeah, because so. there were so, you know, there were so many little different pieces to it to uh, to create, but he took, he took it and, uh, you know, I went over to his place and and sat down and what I, I would get was like the Starship Enterprise, man. He had like, you know, like four or five screens on the wall. He pulled up his whole like his his, his animated, uh, you know, uh, entourage of things to pick from as far as vehicles and like explosions and all types of stuff. I was like, now this is the guy I should have had in the first place. But we'd spent a ton on one guy. We had to fire him. We brought in another guy. So to be totally honest, it was a little over a year it took to wow. piece this thing together. Well, it wow. came out yeah. absolutely amazing. Like, I'm telling you, it's one of the best videos I've seen in quite a long time, and it's so entertaining. Um, let's do some 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 questions I'm sure you get asked often, uh, but how did you guys link up with Matt Pinfield, and how did the uh, DW Presents Power Hour theme song come about? That's it. How do we meet Matt Pinfield? Oh, uh, Matt, so... Uh, you tell the story. It was a little better. I'll chime <laughs> in. I'll chime in. Yeah. So uh, during the second during the second album, uh, it was produced by legendary uh, producer Jay Baumgartner. He did Lincoln Park and Corn and everybody. Papa Roach. And Papa Lawrence. Roach. Yeah. Uh, just a legend. Um, uh, so we were in that studio, and Jay was starting to mix the record as we were still recording songs at the studio. And Matt was great friends with Jay, so he stopped by to see Jay, and Jay was mixing our song Zen. And Matt was, uh, Matt, you know, came in to tell us how blown away he was by the track and how he hadn't been this excited about a song and a band in a long time. And I lost my mind because in walks this guy I've never met before. And I've used to watch him on TV and right. I know his history. And right now he's the, you know, there's the six degrees of separation with every celebrity on the planet. But Matt Penfield is the second degree because he knows everybody. So totally. just to get that kind of opinion about your work, it was it was really just the most rewarding experience of my entire life so far, really, to be, uh, you know, to be in the room with him giving you such uh, praise. Um, and then Power Hour came about yeah. because they were doing the TV show, Access TV. They were doing the show on Twitch, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and then Access TV picked up the show, so they wanted a theme song, and he reached out to Patrick, yeah. and then we started working on it, and... A week later, we delivered it. It, yeah. was, it was a pretty quick thing. They were, yeah. We uh, Matt, Matt's been a champion of the band ever since, so he's been plugging us on KLOS, the radio station here, and uh, and wherever he really can. He's got a, another nationwide show. He keeps putting us on, and we're on in the Tesla cars when you pu pull up the rock station. That is so um, cool. He's just, he, yeah. He just keeps going. It's like the really good guy. It's an it's an unreal. Really you guy. pinch. You have to pinch yourself, you know, for for those kinds of things. And he jumps in on every video. He's been doing. I think he's been in every video since uh, Amber Alert. He's been in a lot of them. Um, and we just, you know, we make him into a devil or kill him or whatever the hell we do. It's just <laughs> yeah, so much that fun. That is so awesome. Pat, I, I do yeah, want to ask he, you. Uh, you have such a unique vocal style. I, I'm sure sometimes you occasionally get compared to like an M Shadows or the singer of Buck Cherry, the way your vocals are. At least that's what I hear. But can you talk about your process of, it's an hour before showtime, what is your ritual to prepare vocally? And then let's say you have multiple shows in a row, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What do you do post-show to cool down to prepare for the next evening? I can try to do some of the sounds for you. But <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no. I, what I do is I, uh, I practice annoying the shit out of everybody else in the band. Is what I do. Um, <laughs> I, I was I was super lucky enough to uh, been turned on and introduced to uh, a, a vocal guru uh, named Ron Anderson. Rest in peace. He died twenty twenty one. But uh, I was studying with him super hardcore just before I started working with Steven Adler. And he taught Cornell, and he even taught Elvis, Pavarotti, Chris Cornell, Axl Rose, Miles Kennedy. Wow, all of legends. Every, legends. Everybody that's anybody. Yeah, every every time I start talking to a singer, I bring up Ron, and, and everybody goes, oh, yeah, Ron Anderson, you know what I mean? Some people try him for a minute, probably don't stick with him because it was super expensive, <laughs> but uh, but it was the most worthwhile uh, you know, thing I ever did in my life because uh, he, he changed my entire uh, capability. So 
before shows, I go back to any of the lessons that he gave me. I'll jump around to any of them because we recorded them all. And basically the first 20 minutes or so of those lessons are always the warm up. So I'll warm up to that and then uh, I turn it off and I'll sing. And then afterwards, it's the same thing. I, uh, there's a warm down section because it's equally as important to warm down as it is to warm up. But the next day you'll end up hoarse and that's how you stay on top of your game uh, on the road. When I went back and, and jammed a lot of your guys' older catalog just to be prepared for today, the, the specific track Open Relationship sounds vocally different. Were you in the band at that point, Pat? Or was is that a different singer? And if it's if it is you, <laughs> you have completely quadruply leveled up from there to, to current recording. Oh. oh, thanks, man. Um, I appreciate that. I mean, I do like it's a workout, you know, it's like going to the gym or something. I, I do my vocal exercises, you know, probably an hour at least every other day, whether I like it or not. I've taken on some students and stuff like that. But it's definitely me. Anything Butterside was me. Butterside was was my uh, kind of, you know, my baby. So um, anything you ever hear that's got the Butterside name on it has been me singing. Heard. Um, but I appreciate that. Yeah, the, the vocal style in that was a little different. I wanted to do some screamo stuff that I'd never done before. I noticed so it's that. not really showing the high notes. It was more about letting go and really screaming. And, of course, the topic of, of having an open relationship is enough to make you scream. So, yeah. How did, how did you meet Sam? <laughs> how did you meet Sam originally? Oh, how did we? Yeah. No, how did we meet? I'm asking you. <laughs> uh, he, was, he, was, um, he was just a kid, man. He was wearing the, his bandanas and... Uh, he was playing it with Gabby Ray at a uh, Harley Davidson, right. or, you know, something we were doing together. I don't remember if it was a cancer fundraiser or something. We were playing we were on the same show. He was playing with Butterside. I was playing with a singer named Gabby Ray. Yeah. And we met and really just started seeing each other out in the scene, different jam nights and stuff in town. And one day he hit me up and was like, uh, do you want to jam? And I was like, oh, is this for Butterside or for something else? And he said, for Butterside and a jam with him and did two shows with them and then that was then i was stuck in the tar <laughs> he had you in his grasp <laughs> by that point <laughs> hell yeah yeah no that was and then like 2018 on i've been uh, in the band officially hell yeah did did kelly mention to you guys about the trivia portion of the show i like to do with guests where we we involve hot sauce and that that kind of thing Reluctantly, I mean, Sam's definitely out. He's like, I'm not doing anything with hot sauce, but I, I brought some. I don't know what you're. That's what cool. You're That's perfect. Or whatever. That's but. perfect. So I have some hot sauce here myself. Whether or not you get the trivia right or wrong, I'm going to drink a little bit of this hot sauce. And if if you lose, just you know, quick little something. Don't do, don't go crazy. But you have the advantage because I need to know if there's a movie or TV show that you guys could both agree on. If I ask trivia about this movie or TV show, there's no way you're stumped because it's you've you picked it. It's you've seen it a hundred times. You know everything about it. In my opinion, a movie is easier because it's a movie, one-off movie versus fifty episodes of a TV show. But it's your call. Sure. I mean, I think we know what we're gonna say, right? Because it's fresh in your mind, and of course, it's I guess embedded it's in, fresh mind in my forever. mind. Yeah, so that's probably the easiest. But what he's probably, I'm guessing he's got some questions that are super, like, you probably pulled some stuff. Well, I need, I, I, I need to know what your, what, what your pick is for the movie or TV show, and then I need to look them up while we're, while we're still asking, uh, you know, normal questions before we do the trivia. But what, what and movie? So if, 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 we can't, if we can't answer, we have to take a shot of uh, hot sauce? Not a shot, but, you know, just a little quick up, down. Little... Yeah, just a little. All right. But... Okay, so. Star Wars, right? I guess Star Wars. Let's do is Star there a Wars. particular Star Wars episode that is, you know, we've seen this one 10 more times than the others? That's a you question, man. I've seen them all once. You can't you can't count how many times I've seen them. So I think you can go from the whole, you can take the whole series, you can take the entire franchise. I got you. Give me just a second to look up some, some Star Wars trivia. Uh, Bud Derside. You're on local band Smokeout. Is it safe to say that the name of the band derives for some reason around marijuana? Has anyone ever asked you that? Uh, we like to say all the good names were taken. <laughs> or we just give a different answer every single time somebody asks about <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, at, you know, at one point, uh, yeah, that's a long one, man. You know, it's like, 
here's the thing is is when I got ready so when Lemmy came to sign us and uh I came to him one night and I was like you know okay so you're signing us we're gonna be on the label like I think I'm gonna change the name Lemmy said I like butter sign and I was like well fucking that's that's good enough for me but how did you come up with it Pat like what what where what was going through your head when you when you decided that is that's the one you don't want to know what was going through his head (laughs) to land on a name like that a lot of different chemicals (laughs) no i mean it was it was a time where like limp biscuit and corn were at the height of you know everybody's they were they were on everybody's brain so that was kind of probably the frame of mind i was in to make something like that all right but we in the process of trying to rename the band it's 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 weird how so many names have come like we've had lists this freaking long and it's like but butterside just means something to us man and every person that i've ever asked that was like the people that i really respect i always when i tell them the name i go god i wonder what this person's gonna think and and they end up championing the name and um and it just makes me think that it's unique and you know uh if you've listened to the music and it means something to you then that's what butterside means I love that answer. Well, fellas, it's time to stump you in some trivia that you have selected. Star Wars A New Hope is the category, the original one. And here we go. Who was R2-D2 and C-3PO's previous master? What is the master of R2-D2 and C-3PO previously before Luke? Um, you must answer before the song ends. You have 10 seconds. Uh, and Tilly's. That is correct! Give me a hell yeah! Shit! I have to do some ghostly garlic hot sauce. Damn it! Well done. I'll look cheers. up another one, but I, you do not have to do the hot sauce unless you just want to do it. it. Oh, cheers. Good sport. You're a good sport. This, so this is Cheers. ghostly garlic, it. and it has like <laughs> chunks. It has chunks of garlic throughout, but it is fairly spicy. Woo! Woo! So you mentioned you mentioned the tour. The tour is coming soon. Uh, is there anything else in 2024 that you're allowed to tell us? I know a lot of times bands have stuff in secrets until until you know reveal dates. What are you guys allowed to tell us that we can look forward to in 2024? Not any of the things you texted me five minutes before you got here. No, uh, no, uh, there, there are some fucking super sick things that are coming and you know, you're not allowed to announce those until they do. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, a Japanese label is, has signed the band to uh, license our stuff. So there'll be a Japanese release coming, a full album Japanese release coming uh, in June. Uh, Normally that, that involves be... like an extra single, doesn't it? It always does, yeah. So they want a tour, you know, we're going we're gonna to give them as many as we can and, and super excited that that should lead to a tour of Japan later in the year, probably end of the year. Um, yeah, other than that, like there's really, there's uh, there's not a lot we can talk about, to be honest. We have to wait for those. Uh, I understand. Those just, and give you a hint. Well, yeah, no hints. No, no hints. There's some no questions hints. coming. But we don't, we we don't want to ruin anything. We've definitely got some more releases coming, uh, some more recording happening. Um, you know, we're always writing, and uh, yeah, we've got a we've got a we've got a plate full just with the stuff that we told you. I mean, the tour coming up and everything we're releasing and announcing is, is enough just to chew on for right now. Yeah. Is there a particular show on the East Coast that you're looking forward to more more than any other? Like uh, maybe a possible state? You have friends and family somewhere, and you're excited about this particular show on that on that run. Um. Probably New York for me, just because anytime getting to go there and getting to walk around the city is is awesome for any amount of time. So, yeah, New York too. One. Gramercy in New York. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm really looking forward to oddly enough uh, our friend Dito at Dingbats. That too. It's a super little like uh, just this grungy historical spot, and it's tiny and sweaty. Killer little club. And uh, you know I'm you know looking forward to really big shows on this tour, but also that one you know. Because uh, our friends are there, and it's gonna be sick. Yeah, yeah. that'll be cool. Hell yeah! Do you guys have any uh, uh, any any phobias? I always like to ask bands if they have anything that like freaks them out. Phobias like heights, spiders, anything that you know. You're on the road, this occurs. You're running straight to the van. You're hiding under a pillow. 
<laughs> my list is too long. So what's your answer? Obvious. Gosh, I don't know. That's I've kind of adopted a like I'm fearless man. This especially this year. This year I've given. So up. I've adapted all the extra fears. So he has none. Yeah. I have all of them. Yeah, I'm trying. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, sharks. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes I'll be in a swimming pool and I'll be like, Whoa! and I'm like, oh yeah, you're in a pool, you're in a swimming pool. <laughs> Probably because I've seen some, you know, uh, while we're out surfing, you know, trying to trying to learn how to surf. I've seen a few, uh, so that that gets a little scary. Snakes. Sometimes I fell off of a of a, of a bicycle once running like a, going through a bicycle track, uh, a dirt you know trail that we made jumps on, and I fell. And once it was like a, it was like an Indiana Jones movie. So the snake came up, this cobra that the that the orchard owner had actually he let out a bunch of them, so we wouldn't ride our bikes through his orchard anymore. So that's pretty scary. Uh, then I guess the usual stuff, man. And there were some like there were some brown recluses in a, in a building I used to live behind, and it was super dark. And I walked through a, a web, and the and the and the thing got on my face, and it was like oh, it was like no. this big one. Oh, no. And it was like, I didn't even know what it was. It was just like, oh, go, 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 go. and then I turned on the light on my phone and looked up and there was like, uh, you know, a bunch of webs. Like they were, there's this corridor. So that kind of freaks me out, but it's not something I like think about all the time, you know? For sure. That would yeah. definitely freak me out. I, I'm, I'm not really a spider guy. I'll kill a spider for my wife if I have to, but walking into like a room of webs and it hits you in the face. Ah, that would freak me out for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, what is your guys? Let's say, let's say uh, you you just played the New York show, the sweaty small one that you were just talking about, and and everything is flawless. The the sound is perfect. You sold out all your merch that night. Money is good. You got a little time before the next date, and uh, it's time to go to go hang out somewhere. What are you grubbing on? What is your go to munchy meal after a great gig? The first show we ever did together, Sam had a taco for the first time. For the first time. Yeah, that's, that's a long. That's a long time ago. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a changed person since then. You're a taco expert um, now. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's a hard question. It's a hard because it's different for me in every situation. Like with Butterside, a lot of times we're just on the road after the show. So yeah, um, you know, yeah. The kind of kind of the idea of uh, of eating what you want and on tour don't really go together. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> totally. Yeah. But in a dream situation, like you just said, I would, I mean, sushi's my go-to. I love sushi, man. Oh, hell sushi, yeah, me like, too. Shishito peppers. Yeah. I'd be into some uh, orange chicken yeah. and some kind of rice. Yeah. yeah. Like Sam, that. Sam, who made you want to pick a, a guitar in the first place when you were when you were yay high? Like, was, did you go to a show, or, or was there a particular album maybe your parents played for you that you just said, "I want to do that," and then you just started learning how to play guitar? There were there were a couple things as a little kid that I really liked. There were a couple songs that I really liked. One headlight by the Wallflowers and Elevation by U2. Actually, like uh -huh. as a kid, I was mm -hmm. like so into those. But then, really, when I was 10 i saw a tv show called rockstar in excess uh where the band in excess was looking for a singer this was in 2005 and uh the guitar player in the house band his name's rafael Moreira, who is a friend of both of ours now and uh, that's a song of them oh he did they died at jam we should we should have him over yeah. yeah um and yeah i saw him play and he had like every gibson guitar that you could imagine and everything about it i was like pretty into it oh yeah that that's is super cool well, fellas, it's time for round two. Oh, Star Wars. Oh, so it's, it's Star it's Wars. Yeah, and this, this is the last of the trivia, but this is significantly harder than the first question because I judge how much you know on Star Wars on the first question. The second question is, what? And it's the same Star Wars movie, A New Hope. What spaceport do Obi Wan, Kenobi, and Luke meet Han Solo and Chewbacca? What is Where the you got to turn down. Jeff. I got you. I got I you. you. What is the name of the spaceport that Obi Wan and Luke meet Han Solo and Chewbacca? Port. The, the name of the spaceport. At this point in the movie, Han and Chewie offer to take Luke and Obi Wan to Alderaan. Yeah, I know what it is, Sam. You know what it Answer. is? Yeah. Most Eisley. Mother. That is correct! Yeah, hell yeah. Damn it! You have definitely seen Star Wars a bunch, brother. 
Well I done. There's never been a bigger hive of scum and villainy. You have seen a lot of Star Wars for sure. What do you think? What do you think of the newest movies? You have no idea. What do you think of the of the of the most recent films? Um, it's kind of a it's a love hate relationship, you know. When it comes to Star Wars, it's like no matter what they put out, I I just appreciate that they're putting out new stuff, and I have something more to expand my mind in that universe in. So uh, they can't do any wrong by me. I can understand where people come from, and you know, I I definitely had my ideas of where I would have wanted the whole story to go but you you know how can you expect two people to dream up the same thing um so I accept it for what it is and I know that I know that the franchise and all the people working on it have definitely taken note of what they've done with the series and I know that they're trying to fix it and correct it going forward and I'm excited to see what they do next because there's a lot of shit coming and it's it's looking pretty dope I I uh, I mean, I saw all the new ones. I don't understand still to this day how Luke died. He was tired and he, he just died. That doesn't really make any sense to me. But, gentlemen, is there is there anything that we did not discuss today that you would like to bring up that we should at least know or mention? Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Okay, if you close your eyes and you teleport yourself to another planet all the way across the galaxy, and then you fight some guy who's like the most powerful Sith in the universe, and you win, and then you come back to your body. You think you could handle that? Nah, I sure as hell couldn't handle that, no, so. You might be onto something. Probably, probably, uh, you'd probably call it a day. Probably. There's a lot of, a lot of battles he's yeah, been I through, I too. I get out of bed, and I want to call it a day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, you guys are amazing, man. I'm excited about the tour for you guys. Uh, like I said, the, the music video, which is the first thing I ever saw from you before checking out a bunch of your stuff to be ready for this today is incredible. I can't believe it took a year, but it, it looks like it took that long. Like it's that amazing. Uh, I, I couldn't even imagine the day that, that Matt Penfield hears your music and just, and just, you know, a lifelong legend. Like you said, Pat, you had to, you had to pinch yourself. That is incredible. But uh, this was a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you guys uh, just taking some time out of your day to do this with me. Thank you so much. And and um, we wish you nothing but success, fellas. For real. We really do. Thank you so much. Thanks, really man. appreciate you having us on, man, and sharing us with your fan base. We appreciate you. Very much. If it's okay with you, I'll throw this on YouTube tomorrow and uh, and send a link over through IG or, or Facebook. Uh, is that okay? Yeah, and we'll share the hell yeah. out of it. Yeah. Hell yeah, awesome. Pat, Sam, you guys have an excellent evening. Stay safe on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, butter side! Yeah, hell yeah! Cheers, boys. Thank you so much. Thank you.